S T. Ron, we're started. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Um, good morning, everyone, and, and happy Mother's Day to all the uh, mothers on the line. Um, before we get started, are there any uh, questions or comments, uh, or thoughts from from yesterday or past weekend? Anyone wants to uh, bring up or any questions to ask? This is Ron. I was uh, I, I was speaking with with Pastor earlier, and, and uh, I don't know if you guys were. were uh, Good Oh, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. I can hear you. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I I think this has a, a lot. I, I I try to look sometimes and kind of uh, look at some changes or what things that have happened since the pandemic. And I think we went through an awakening that we're still seeing the results of. And uh, I noticed uh, here lately they've been talking a lot about a, a record number of people who are leaving their jobs. And uh, I, I just wonder if anybody had any thoughts on, on that. Uh, and, and they're not, it, it, it initially started, and, and a lot of it is a lot of people want to work from home. I, I get that part. But even that, uh, people are leaving and saying, you know, there's more to life than this. It's, it's, it's got to be more out there. Uh, it it kind of woke them up from that mundane life that we're just so accustomed to. And uh, this, I, I just thought that was worth taking a pause and looking at. And then one if anybody else has paid attention to that. Yeah, I, I know we touched on a little bit yesterday. Um, with just the, you can kind of see a shift in that regards. Uh, uh, companies are, are being forced to treat people better, but I think also the people that are walking away have weighed the option over quality of life versus just uh, having this extra discretionary income that, you know, that they realize that there was more to life than just having that um, that cash. But I think some of these folks are finding other ways to to make a living, but more importantly, I think they've uh, they've got a, a taste of a better quality of life and realize that um, you know for them, and it's uh, it is more important for them to uh, enjoy that quality of life and, and probably return back to the workforce with something that's going to allow them to uh, maintain that versus uh, being on such a structured rigid timeline that was definitely one of the things we touched on a little bit yesterday and and how companies now are going to have to be more creative and and flexible as far as um how they want people to um to work for them and and it's just um one of the things we talked about yesterday also was the uh the gentleman that um before Congress that's um, organizing the Amazon uh, union and how you could see in his voice and the passion he had that he he felt like there was such a connection with those folks in uh, in Amazon that he really was willing to lay it all out on the line to to represent them and that you know we saw the power that connection that communication that's going forward and, and people are taking a different approach. Yeah, it was all uh, just a couple of people I saw spoke speak. Uh, one lady mentioned uh, the quality of time of spending with her children, spending time with her kids, and uh, another guy just said family. You know, spending more family time, and I just I just thought you know that people it, it it did something. It did something more than just. Uh, pause the world and 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 business as usual may never be the same usual. Uh, so I, I think we'll kind of stay tuned for some of the changes and 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 things that to uh, 
to come out of this, even though it seems like things are sort of back to normal. I, I think things are still being stirred up. Yeah, uh, you know, just the the e- economic part of me, it's it versus the spiritual aspect. I think the spiritual aspect of it, you had a lot of people realizing that something, whether it was the work, the work structure, the time, these were a lot of people that saw that something had them stuck. And if they were going to be able to move forward and continue and develop as individuals, I think uh, a lot of them saw that, hey, I'm going to make this choice now because uh, I'm in a place where I'm kind of stuck, I'm in a, you know, you know, from a identity and self-improvement and an ability to grow. Uh, some of those folks probably felt like they were stuck. And we've been there before where, like, if you were in a job and you're in a job, feel like it's just kind of holding you back and or it's got you uh, at a disadvantage when it comes to your work-life balance. You know, a lot of people choose to find another job that's uh, a little less um, hectic schedule-wise. And so just in general, that's what you see on the surface. But, you know, beneath the surface, you know, how many, if you ask the question, how many people were actually stuck in a life that that they saw that, okay, I, I need to do something to uh, to shake things up? And then from, you know, economic-wise, I think it's going to change the system a little bit. It's going to shake it up a little bit because there is a supply and demand, and, and now people are just searching for a balance on how to, to function in this, but I think it did shake up the system to where now you're going to, you know, the system is going to have to adjust. Um, may I? Yes, sir. I, I, I think I see it a little bit different in terms of the balance aspects of it. And I, I'll mention that in a moment. However, I think uh, there were, there were 4 million people who quit their jobs in July. There was 4.3 million who quit their jobs in December. 8.3 million people are now quitting a job to work at home. What does that mean? Um, we The pandemic did have an effect on it. However, desire for, for balance also had an effect on it. Uh, what's happening between uh, before our eyes, and I'm saying eyes purposely, uh, is that the ba- balance is unfolding bet- before our eyes. The thing that we saw, were, the need that we saw with our eye is unfolding. And for some reason, well, I know what the reason is, it's just difficult for us to see it with our eye, what, what that means. Uh, these people are, are have picked up on the energy of balance, and they're beginning to realize that uh, capitalism is greed, and uh, greed has been, uh, in, we have been indoctrinated with greed, which called a good job, or we were not indoctrinated with greed, uh, which by virtue of the commercials we see on TV of all of these fantastic uh, people who are retiring. And all of these um, these places, these these paradise paradises around the earth, we we see all that on TV, and that was a goal that was working toward and working itself to death, and forgetting your family, forgetting uh, your health, not paying any attention to anything except that job. So now, uh, th- uh, that energy of desire for balance, they picked up on it because they had time to stop. When COVID came into um, into our lives, it brought, as Ron said, everything to a halt, to a pause. And during that period, they had a chance of money, something other than a job, something other than retirement. Uh, and and they, they began to see the necessity of being of interacting with not just family, but also uh, with with community, uh, with p- other people, and 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 waging a battle um, to uh, save the earth, save the seas, uh, the oceans, and 
to preserve the forestry uh, in, in the world. So again, in conclusion, I, I, uh, I see this, this um, bleeding uh, of jobs in this country as a means of bringing balance. And it is not over with yet. Thank you. Questions or comments? With with that balance that they're that they're looking for, how is that going to impact the the rest of you know? Even though you've got so you've got the eight eight million people plus. And just those two months that decided not to, um, you know, they've sort of had an awareness. Don't won't that help uh, help or shift the other hundred or so million just across the world? That um, it's almost like it's going to have a ripple effect on everyone. Anyway, right now they're trying to. Uh, the negative energy out there is, oh man, we can't get anybody to work. And, but that's not the case. But that's some of the perception that that they're pushing is, oh, we, we can't get nobody who wants to work. But the reality is, it's the quality of life. But won't that uh, eventually have a ripple effect on on how we view traditional work now and, and the system as a whole, the economic system? Well, uh, first of all, this whole concept of nobody wants to work has been in existence forever and a day. Uh, we were enslaved, but we were called lazy people who didn't want to work. Uh, even in 1974, during the recession then, people don't want to work. All that attitude was out there. And that, and that um, propaganda about people not wanting to work was put out there uh, to... Um, make people feel guilty about not want, not wanting to return to substandard conditions on the job and even worse pay. Uh, however, this time there was an infusion um, uh, of the energy from Elohim and that infusion of energy from Elohim uh, caused people to look deeper and to see that it um, uh, is not just substandard pay we're working and can't even live off what we're working for. And and when that eye when that eye was open, they began to view it differently than just nobody wants to work. Uh nobody wants to work uh should be translated into nobody wants to pay people to work. Because think about this. When when um when salaries start going up, gas start increasing also. Food start, uh, prices start increasing also. The effort is to keep people struggling so that they don't have opportunity uh, to ponder what's going on. I never shall forget, um, during, the, during the administration of Ronald Reagan, he destroyed the Silicon Valley because there were too many, as he put it, uh, left-leaning people in Silicon Valley. And they had all the time in the world to uh, wage wars against um, uh, against the corporations uh, who were um, treating people badly uh, in the workplace and seeking profits above everything else. Uh, during that period, the Ronald Reagan years was was a season of greed and an opportunity to bust unions. Uh, I was in I and some other. Pastors were in Chicago when Ronald Reagan busted the um, uh, the um, air traffic controllers union. So these are these are the things that are being rectified. They are being rectified right now. Um, so so um, that's when it talks about nobody wants to work. It's just nobody wants to pay. Okay, that's how I see it anyway. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Any, anyone else? Any, uh, any questions or comments? Uh, also, and to see life and and um, community are more important than money. 
that 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 whole adoption of the Caucasian attitude towards money is shifting, even with Caucasian. I mean, does that make sense? No, I, I agree with it. It's, it's, it starts going down to where we've always talked about the, the, the difference in philosophy and and even how that line was drawn in scriptures, you know, and, and, and that's between religion and it just goes down to there's a change in philosophy and it's a majority versus minority that that energy is shifting the, the the philosophical differences are are starting to really be exposed. And when you research one philosophy versus the other, you know you got one that can stand on truth, and and it's been tested, you know, internally. And you got one that um, stands on fear, or what is presented to people visually. And so I, I do see like you have this um, this shift in, um, in in the balance of the two philosophies going side by side versus you know you know religion and truth. And so you know one was built on the external uh, views and and pressure, and now you have the other one that, like you said, people are becoming more aware of who they are and and how things have been present it to them, but now when you pass that philosophy from the inside, you, you see the, the difference in the two, and I think that's the even the shift that was talked about in galleys. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that very clearly. Um, I, I also think that we, meaning um, those of us who are seeking truth and change, um, I think that we are uh, seeking it so hard until we miss it when it comes. We have yeah. eyes, we have an eye to see, but we're not seeing. We're, we're um, describing what we was transpiring using a philosophical slash political language as opposed to spiritual language, because what is taking place right now has never in the history of this country taken place. And that is 8 million people in the frame of two months, July uh, 4 million and 4.3 million in December. That has never happened in this country before, ever. So let's um, be more focused with the eye and and shift from the um, philosophical slash political explanations of what's happening because that, that that's not what's happening at all. It's totally spiritual. Oh, and guess what? Uh, what's uh, increasing and encouraging that shift? The thing that's encouraging that shift is is when you when they when people see folk like Bezos paying thirty million dollars to have a bridge dismantled so he can get his yard out of port after it's built and and reassembling that bridge, um, that the people are getting tired of that kind of attitude. But this is the this is the real kicker. You would think that it would be poor people who are rising up to fight this battle, but it's not. It is not. It is it is people who are deemed to be middle income people. Uh, uh, those These are the people who fight in this battle. Why? Uh, and I'm speaking totally of um, the Caucasian attitude about money because the very poor people, the very poor Caucasian will not stand against a tax break for billionaires, why they get a tax increase? Because for some reason they believe that if, at some point in their lives they're going to be a billionaire, and they and they 60 years old, 70 years old, and have and and um and living off Social Security and Medicaid, and but they think that they go they have an opportunity to be a quote unquote Donald Trump one day, who's not a billionaire, of course. But that's that's the attitude that they have been sold. But the people who are in that middle, that middle income bracket do not see it that way. They're beginning to open their eye because of us. Thank you. That's another postulate I would like. On, on the heel of that, though, um, 
when when the, the upride that that we had after um you know all the rioting and and and, and a lot of people that were hurt in the marches were white people. Uh, you know, people actually killed uh, the woman in West Virginia. It kind of started it, uh, you know, it, as you see, attack on people you don't normally see attacked or killed in, in uh, things that are uh, have to do with races. And, and uh, when white folks start dying because of that, do you think that also served as an eye opener that all this time, we thought different, I, I guess, or we, we had a higher opinion of ourselves. But the truth of the matter is we're no different than anybody else. As far as the nation is concerned, you, you have money or you don't have money. And if you don't have money, this is how you treat it. So we're, we're tools just like the Africans are tools. Do, do you think that was part of their thinking? And what we're seeing well, I, now, I do because if you think of back uh, when the three white civil rights workers were killed, when Viola Larusso was killed uh, by the Klan, that that opened up everything. Uh, the 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 um, desires for uh, voter registration bills, uh, the fight for civil rights, all of that increased, and and they got uh, more people involved. Not uh, because white people are dying. And, and you can't say that it was going to happen anyway because the Africans have been dying ever since they touched a uh, foot on the shore and nobody cared. And now you have, during the um, the uh, demonstrations in Missouri, I think it was Missouri, where uh, the uh, two white guys were killed by a white guy, uh, a white boy with, with a, uh, a rifle. And that opened eyes as well. I think that there was no... There is not a disconnect uh, between those deaths of those white guys and the um, the, the bleeding of, of, of um, the jobs in this country. I don't think that those are disconnected at all. I do think that there are different phases of, um, of, of balance that we are seeing take place. If you look closely at the demonstration that were taking place, you will see that the majority of them were white people. And that has yeah. never been seen before, never, because there are white people who sit around and talk about the 60s. They were they were getting high and fighting the Vietnam War. They were not with us. They were the, the overwhelming majority of white kids in the 60s was getting high and, and fighting and marching against the war in Vietnam and, and, and um, had very, very little to do with the civil rights movement. Even if you look at uh, Abby, what's his name? Uh, oh my God, I can see his face. Uh, the um, Social Hoffman. Workers Party. Huh? Abby Hoffman. Hoffman. Yeah, Abby Hoffman. If you look at Abby Hoffman, Abby Hoffman was, was fighting against the Vietnam War. Most of them were. So, so now that that energy has shifted, and with the with, if you look at what transpire as as their efforts against the war, the war ended. So when things shift uh, to to uh, white people, that's when change comes. The question is why? That's the big question. The reason things uh, are changing, uh, have changed rather, with white people being involved, because this is the first time that they on on a, on a um, expanded basis have been involved with quote unquote civil rights or equality, however you want to term it. This is the first time they ever have done that on the scale that they are doing it now. And the reason they are doing it is not what we probably think it is. There is not so much a sensitivity that's doing it. The question is what caused that sensitivity. What is the what is the the catalyst that 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 caused that sensitivity to rise up in them? Think about it. We made a statement years ago. Racism is not our problem. Racism 
is white folk problem. And they are the ones who have to solve it. They created it. They perpetuate it. It's up to them to deal with it because there is no way that we can force anyone to stop believing or to stop perpetuating what they desire to believe or to perpetuate. Can you see that? And you yeah. mean anybody on? Yeah. Yeah. We, Pastor, this, um, you're right because they, we've been marching and, and 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 fighting to try to get white people to see, you know, what they're doing to us. But some have seen, but some they just close a blind eye to it and keep on doing what they do. It does. Yeah. It is going to have to take down the white people to see they're wrong. Yeah, and, and that's a great way of putting it, y'all. See, they're wrong because they have never seen what they what have been happening as being wrong. They've never seen it that way because they've never seen us as people. They and you'll be amazed at the at the uh, white people who are engaged or uh, in movement uh, and and uh, interact with black people on a regular basis who think they're not racist. You'd be amazed. So, so it is the 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 um, it is honestly what it is. Uh, yesterday, I mentioned something that Ron had said. I'm glad he's on the phone today uh, about um, the uh, white privilege being a curse. Um, I, I I see that clearly, and honestly, what's happening is um, they're beginning to see with their eye, not only the racism, but the privilege they have enjoyed um, since this country, the inception of this country, and actually have a deep desire to change it all so that mankind can be what it was it, uh, created to be. And when we think about white people changing it, uh, it is not so much white people changing it because they want to, uh, it is Elohim showing them what needs to be changed. The African is showing them what needs to be changed and it's not being done through marching. It's being done through spirituality. Any questions about that? I hope it's clear. No, it's, it's clear. And I uh, want to take us, you know, take a step back and, and try to integrate it into uh into what we know well really it's just been the last few weeks of the conversation but when we when we look at this at this big picture and this is I guess what I'm I'm hearing from you now in this scene. So in our lessons we've talked about, you know, the the alignment that we get from meditation. So in in essence what COVID did was COVID was, you know, basically a symbolic version or, or COVID was meditation for the world. It forced people to, uh, who were in the midst of things and having a lot of things going on around them that they really, they were tunnel vision. And so, and so COVID took away the tunnel vision and exposed a lot of things around the world and, and created this awareness. The COVID, COVID was sort of a forced meditation that, that people actually got the opportunity to begin to align themselves, to become more aware. And then that sensitivity that you're talking about, um, basically more aware of the connection with others, and they saw that more clearly. And so it's the same type of clarity that we have been talking about for the last couple of weeks when we take time to to focus and align our attention and center ourselves internally that we uh, get the results the clarity of the results that we get from there and so same thing is happening in the throughout the world now there's a centering going on and and, and people are searching and trying to get the clarity 
And so in the meantime with that, from our perspective, we put our energy towards the, the pushing and the promoting of that clarity and, and and not really shape what's, you know, to come. Is 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 that sort of the the big picture for us is how we're involved with it. I agree, yes. Uh it it is, but it is that we can't we don't we have always said we don't want to shape because we will not know what it looks like. And I believe that's a part of, of not being able to see what's actually happening. You know, the uh, balance of being able to see the balance in these people leaving their jobs and engaging in these demonstrations. Think about it this way. Um, during those demonstrations, it was in the heat of COVID, in the middle of it, and they were not super spread events. At least I never read or heard anything about being a super spread event. However, you can have 200 people at uh, Rose Garden to announce uh, the appointment of uh, a judge, a, a justice for the Supreme Court, and it becomes a super spread event. You have the press uh, dinner at the White House, it becomes a, a super spread event. But these these people are in the street in droves and they did not become super spread events. Why? Why? Why is that? Why is no one asking that question? Could it possibly be they didn't become super spread events because of righteousness? They were doing a righteous cause. You have mistreated Elohim all of these years. And now that uh, the African is becoming aware of who it is and its purpose for having been created and placed in this earth realm. Now that that awareness is coming into being, there is a sense of protection by the universe so that the message can get out, so that the message can be seen. And don't and you can cool believe they saw it, but they weren't going to talk about it. You got tens of thousands of people in the streets across this country, if not hundreds, and they do not become super spread events. And two hundred does. You have a convention uh, in, in the convention hall, and it becomes a super spread event. Why? And you can't say simply because indoors, because the one at the White House was in the Rose Garden. And it became a super spread event. So, so there is that 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 self should be an uh, eye opening experience because of the 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 um the way it transpired. I, I mean, I, I see I, I, there are some things that I see. I've been shown. I understand that I'm going to delve into in the very, very, very near future, that's going to be hard to hear. But I am going to do it. Have I have to do it. Uh, and a portion of that is understanding that that the Old Testament, 99 and 9-10% of the Old Testament, two things. One, it's a story that was drawn out of Cush. Two, it is an allegory. The whole thing is an allegory. If Jesus said uh, that my word is spirit and truth, uh, and, and the Father must, must be worshipped um, in spirit, if the word is that, then that means that all of it is spiritual. And if all of it is spiritual, then those stories that we look at with our eyes should have been looked at with our eye. Suppose for a moment that Cain and Abel never existed in the physical as much as they did in the in the allegory. A story about how life unfolds and a story about the attitudes as they unfold, with Cain's attitude being one that I can do whatever I want to do because I choose to do it. And Abel's attitude, recognizing that I am Elohim, and I obey what I hear in, in me, the principles of Elohim. And because Cain did not um, uh, uh, adhere to that, Cain became substance. 
uh, the attitude became a substance for the the uh, balance in humanity, so that Elohim in human could in human form could function the way it's supposed to, and those attitudes were in place long before uh, we became the physical beings with the understanding that we have. We cannot read the scriptures in chronological order because there is no chronological order about them. Jesus said, how can you understand heavenly things when you, when you don't understand earthly things? And I am saying that I understand the heavenly, the heavenly, uh, um, understand, uh, the heavenly wisdom of what happened with um, Cain and Abel and, uh, and how it fits into life as we live it or attempt to live it in this earth realm. And that, that's a, a supposition that at some point I'm going to explore. And in doing so, I'm also going to look at the true function of melanin and why is it that Caucasians will not discuss melanin, will discuss every other quote unquote chemi chemical or every substance except melanin. And, and I'm going to talk about the effects that it has on the body based upon the the amount of melanin that is found in people. Uh, and so all of that is spiritual. And it's going to be a hard conversation. But I intend to have it. And and, and I, I don't see a way around it. The the um the, the war uh uh in in Ukraine, um that war is much bigger than what we think it is. It looks like uh, Russia is invading Ukraine uh, for the purpose of, of uh, rebuilding the Soviet Union. But honestly, these are two tribes that are fighting against each other. There are two tribes of Caucasians fighting against each other. One group of Caucasians um, has, has duped people into believing that the state will take care of them and at the same time uh, draining them and keeping them poor. That's Russia. The other one uh, has convinced people that they all of them could be rich, and they've used religion to help them reinforce that uh, health, uh, wealth, the health and wealth ministry, the charismatic ministry. All, all you have to do is desire in your heart, and you shall receive. The scripture says, if you do some prerequisites, if you keep my Sabbath, uh, if, if you feed your brother, etc then you will have the desire of your heart. All of these things we are, I want to look at in depth because right now uh, we have, and I use these terms very loosely, we have Western Europe connected with America, fight against Eastern Europe. And if you really think about it, Western Europe did not want to have any dealings with Eastern Europeans other than for a labor force until they came in contact with, with Africans. And then even after that, they did not want to deal with them at all. And they were the, they, they were the bastards of Europe uh, doing it throughout World War I and World War II and have been uh, treated that way. And after the wall came down and, and, and the Eastern Europeans uh, uh, became independent nations, that broke up the attitude of those who felt like they could uh, lie to people about the state taking care of them and keep them poor while, while there are a handful who got richer. And right now, the attitude of greed is fighting against each other. That's Russia and the U.S. and Europe. And it is, it is, it's a battle uh, against, for, for the uh, soul of, of um, Caucasians in relationship to the greed that's in this world and the manipulation and the disdain for Africans because America and, and, East and Western Europe has a deep disdain for Africans and Eastern Europeans are the same way. As a matter of fact, Eastern Europeans are more open about how they feel about us as a, as a uh, uh, people, those uh, who are from Africa. Uh, Eastern Europeans are just like uh, the um, Southern uh, a slave master was, have no qualms about saying what they feel about us. So all of these these are uh, intertwined with Cain and Abel. And, and I, and I, I um, well, 
uh, I'm going to apologize for taking up that time because it was necessary. Any questions or comments about that? Or can you see that? Is it clear? It's clear. I see it. It's clear. Any questions about it? Isn't that, isn't that um, the same concept, though, that uh, religion is imposed on us and and it's something that's being imposed versus uh, a free will to choose and the opportunity to, to really find out? Isn't that just the same thing? It goes back to that. Yeah. Even a bigger part of religion being imposed on us? Yeah, it, it does go back to that. Because <clears throat> the African and the uh, Caucasian, um, the the African for quite some time has not had the opportunity to function based upon his own its own thoughts. It has been forced to to um, think the way the European wants the African to think, and this started uh, in Egypt with the um, the overthrow of um, Egypt when when uh, one of the uh, uh, pharaohs of Egypt, who was African, allowed uh, Alexander to come in uh, in, into um, Egypt and allowed them to uh, go into the libraries and to allow them to uh, be taught uh, by um, uh, uh, by the teachers uh, in Kemet. And, and from that, uh, Egypt be began to decline. And every nation that Europeans have come in contact with have declined. Every single nation, every single group of people on the face of the earth has declined when they came in contact with Europeans. Their culture was uh, snatched away from them. Their, their, their spiritual beliefs were snatched away from them. Every single thing that brought balance to this earth was snatched away when Europeans came in contact with people of color. Well, Questions or comments? I have a comment, Pastor. And this is this is how um, we have the erroneous concept that that Egypt Egyptians were white uh, because the Ptolemies with Alexander and them when they came in they tried to wipe out a lot of the other history. And, um, and basically they only teach about all the um, Cleopatra and all the ones that are, that are white. So we get the erroneous idea that, that Egypt was white. Well, also Audrey, it took what was it, six months for them to burn the books that were in the libraries in Egypt? Uh, Alexander? All the ones that they didn't steal and take back to, to, um, to Greece or to Rome, they burned them. In order to wipe out any history of us, of people of color. Right. And, 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 uh, and, and, and have taught us to, to a degree, to such a, a depth, I should say maybe, uh, the, the, um, have taught us that anything we say about people of color, Caucasians, is not uh, is antithetical to the scripture. It's racist. It's racist when we talk about the positivity of our but it's not racist when our white people talk about the sphere art. So the hard conversation that we are going to have is the the substance that's in that was put here for the African to to be who it was created to be, so that it could be in this human form the same as Elohim because the creating of a tree is not our function. The creating of 
an attitude of spirituality is, is our function as African. And, 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 when, and that is the reason the struggles are between religion that was created by Caucasians based upon uh, African concepts and the, the um, spirituality that Africans have always held to. And in between, uh, no one talks about the in between, meaning that I'm not saying that they're not important, but the struggle is between the Caucasian and the African, the two extremes. And the extremes, I don't mean in a negative way at all, because one cannot exist without the other. And the one that is supposed to bring balance has always been kept off balance by being forced to embrace concepts that are to its beliefs that are contrary to its soul. And that is the reason that, that the African has always been forgiven then, no matter what, what happened, or been vindictive uh, based upon what has been done to the African. There's a reason for that. And all of it is tied into melanin. Questions, comments? Yeah. Good morning, Pastor. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is George. And again, I appreciate, you know, again, the conversation that we're having. And I think as you speak, you know, about, you know, uh, Kemet or Kushite or the, you know, African um, uh, history of uh, the Pastor, I, I think that we need to, you know, look at revisiting, you know, the primary, you know, uh, sources in terms of just documentation that we know that have been written you know, from the Memphite theology or looking at the Shabaka stone and just looking at the truth in terms of what is um, available to us in terms of looking at our beginning. And so as we, you know, continue to appreciate this journey that we're on, you know, hopefully that's something that we can, um, you know, uh, expound, be, be expound upon in terms of just looking at, you know, those, um, you know, primary sources in terms of documentation that we know, you know, are the truths in terms of our spirituality and our journey, in terms of bringing healing, you know, to our, um, you know, to our universe. So I just wanted to share those thoughts as you were speaking about that. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Well, keep in mind that we, as a people, were not ashamed of our physical features until we came in contact with Europeans, Ethiopia. Black, Kemet, or Kemite, or Kemet means um, uh, um, people of the Black Earth, Kushite, Black. Everything that described us described us as being Black people. There was no shape. As a matter of fact, Black was revered because of what it added to the cultures around the world and and the references that were made to us uh, about us all of them referenced being black and there was no shame to that the moors more mean black if people are running around here talk about uh, i'm a moor and trying to make it a religion when the only thing it, it speaks to the color of the skin of the people who invaded southern spain and um and was Hannibal coming across the the out uh, into um coming across the mountains into um Italy. All of these things in Sicily, in Sicily all of these things are are, are are pertinent to the journey that we are on. Because if we do not deal with the truth in every aspect of the truth, then we may as well start discontinue the journey. Not only that, um if if we don't deal with the, the truth of what is, then we are, in essence, allowing the lie to continue to live in the in the in hearts of humanity. We must correct the wrong that's been done, and 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 um and, and revealing the truth in every area is a part of correcting what has been done wrong in this earth. 
And thank you, George, for those comments as well. Yeah, and Pastor, you mentioned, yeah, also, I'm sorry, I, I, I wanted to just to, uh, expound upon the scripture we have talked about from the dust we were created to the dust we shall return and how that relates to the melanin or what you're speaking on now. Good. No, I'm sorry. Um, I, I just wanted to ask if, um, you know, you can oh, expound okay. upon that in terms of your thoughts. Yes, yes I can. Um when it says that we were made from the dust of the earth, uh, keep in mind, it says to replenish. It also uh, speaks to, to uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it also coincides with what happened, uh, um, what Kemet means. People of the black earth means, uh, does not, uh, um, does not, what, is not different from being created from the dust of the earth. It, there's no difference in the two. If the earth is black, what does it create? It creates black people. If we are people of the black earth. So I, I see no difference there. And I don't uh, want you at this moment, George, to delve uh, much deeper into it because all of this comes into play where we begin to talk about um, the, the importance, or the, not importance, I'm sorry, the necessity of melanin. And when we start talking about it, that there are black holes in the universe and start talking about that there are uh, concentrations of melanin in the universe, the, the, the things that we call black holes constitute are made up of melanin uh, in the universe. I said the earth, I think, but I meant the universe. So George, does that help any at all? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for uh, sharing that. You're welcome, sir. So, Any other questions? Uh, what, what I'm hearing, I, I'm thinking, when I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm thinking of a journey, you know, nomad journey. Here. And it, it sounds like uh, the, the whether you're talking about the, the Kushites or the Moors or they all had the same journey, meaning they were supposed to be influencers over the earth, and some in, in some way, shape, or form that didn't materialize. So you've heard me, you and I have talked sometime, and I told you I, I feel sometimes like I don't belong anywhere, feel alien sometimes. And maybe, maybe, maybe that answers that we weren't supposed to be comfortable, uh, and just settling and and kind of assimilating. Life had become other civilizations. We were supposed to be influencers and move on. And maybe that scripture that that we talked about for a while, I, I will bring Kush back to me. If, if I have to bring him in chains, the back to me is maybe the awakening of him, the, the, the awakening to, to he know who he is and and uh, the, the, the chains or the all the things that we see that uh, has happened to us over the centuries, over all these years, is a part of that bringing back uh, and 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 the chain. So it these things look, and they are uh, horrible as they are. It is all for part of the spiritual journey to awaken the African or the Moors or the Kushites or whoever into the reality of not only who you are but the purpose of being of the Black Earth. Uh, and because we 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 have lost that that sense of our identity. I can see that, Ron. We, um, and, and even in our struggle and our fight, we, we still only talk about equality. We, we, we don't see the, the, the spiritual side of who we are. So anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, the, uh, that's no apology necessary. The, 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 the idea uh, of um, being taken from the earth, the dust of the earth, gives us insight 
into why people of color were so connected to the earth or had a unicity with the earth, had an understanding of the earth. Yet, the only people of color who were able to actually see what was in the universe was the African, the Dogon. The Dogons are the only uh, uh, people who were able to see beyond what the earth, what, what we see in this earth with our naked eyes. Why? How, would, how did that happen? We, if you were made from the earth, you still are a part of the earth. And the, the, um, the, the connection to the earth does not change simply because uh, you have been forced to submit uh, to a, a a group of people who have no respect for the earth, no regard for it at all. Now, this is the other thing. It should not be a surprise to us that that there is the Europeans have no respect for the earth at all. That shouldn't surprise us. They only want the earth for what it can give them. And if it takes destroying the earth to get it, that's what they would do. That is no different than the attitude is towards the African. Only want what the African is capable of giving and does not care if it is destructive to the African, it's going to get what it, what it wants. In regards to the uh, Kushites being brought back with change, I see that very clearly. However, I see something else as well. We have been searching for that for years, and most of us, we saw that scripture, and it's not there. Maybe it was not there anymore because the journey had been embarked upon. But we made, uh, on this, or came to an understanding that slavery, as, as, as horrifying as it was, as deadly and, and, um, and, and destructive as it was, was necessary and orchestrated by our creator. Shortly after that, we couldn't find that scripture anymore. So maybe if, if we pay close enough attention to the scriptures, we will see that each time we are shown something, there is something, we, we create a world where what we saw in the past is not necessarily needed anymore. So it, it doesn't exist anymore in that form because the words that were there have become a, a reality in that we are back in our right mind seeking to be who we were created to be. Does that make sense? You're wrong. Yes, sir. It does. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Now, every, everything I said, just go ahead. I, I'm trying not to, uh, to go too far knowing what you're uh, uh, working on, but uh, the reference to the blackness as well that you uh, mentioned, and you're talking about um, uh, the soil of uh, the region, um, you know, Kemet, et cetera. <laughs> also, it being extremely uh, black was due to the silt that came from uh, the Nile River. But also, as you uh, mentioned, uh, uh, the soil and also the closeness in reference to Black people uh, as well. It is also uh, that for which all the uh, vegetation and greenery, et cetera, you know, came from in terms of uh, nourishment and uh, providing uh, also. And the black soul, in terms of it being uh, held in a place of uh, a reverence, of black being uh, held in a reverence, in, in a place of reverence, it's almost if it, if if that was the god of this uh, earth, or in a sense, a priest of of God, essentially God on this earth, uh, being that source or being a creator uh, within this uh, world, and then. Um, also, as you were, uh, so, well, I say all that to say, um, connected to what you were saying in terms of the reverence of the blackness and understanding 
uh, it being um, creation and the closeness of creation and being a source of creation. Um, now, moving forward to coming uh, over here into the Americas and to understand and look at the, uh, the enslaved people who came over here and with the closeness to nature, to have the ability to immediately uh, be thrust into a new environment, uh, totally different and still in terms of feeding, um, I don't wanna say uh, a new nation as if a nation wasn't here already, but uh, more so a, a new nation uh, for those who brought them here not being able to sustain and even survive on their own. Um, working with uh, the soil and uh, working the land and having the understanding in a totally new uh, environment, how to bring nourishment uh, from the, uh, this new place as well, um, from that spiritual connection to the, uh, to the earth and being uh, close and being the earth and being a part of the earth, as you mentioned. I'm finished. Thank you, sir. Any questions about that? Um, we so, like just just like we 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 talk about scripture, Pastor. We we talk about when we study the, the scriptures and you see them as allegories, you see them as metaphors, whatever. You we 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 have, are are moving maybe. To have it, this, you know, this event, then sounds like Rod, what, Rod, Rod, I'm not sure if everyone were, else heard you, but you were uh, breaking uh, up. Can you uh, start over for uh, from the place from which you first started, please? Okay. All I was, was saying is, all. Uh, when we respect of us, and it is not so important important to know where the Garden of Eden was physically. That's not Ron, this is Vermel. You keep breaking up. I thought it was my phone, but I can't hear you, Ron. Oh, we can't hear you. Can you hear us? Uh Vermeil, or uh, Sheldon, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes okay, I can hear Ron. you. This is Ron uh, going out. Okay. Uh, Ron, would you try this again? If you can hear us. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Can you am I coming through now? You are now, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know, no different chair. Different part of the room. Oh, no, I, I was just saying, I'm listening to what everybody's saying about this, and it just reminded me that as we study the scriptures, we see that every time you get to a point, it goes out. The, the, I, I don't know what else, what I do different. Are you holding the phone right. to your uh, face? If so, try just to, uh, I guess, hold it uh, in front of you to keep it uh, uh, lay free. It. Lay it okay. down. I, I, yeah, and, and don't I, cover I, it up with your hand. If you're doing that, just hold it with your fingertips and let's try that, please. Okay, um, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is the earth is, instead of seeing the earth as a physical sphere that, that has soil and trees, it is a spiritual resource for, for man. And it was put here for us to gather those resources and, those, and, and, and not the resources of, of pulling all the oil from it and, and all the minerals, but a resource of spirituality so the, that, that the human can recognize that he's the human. So it, it, it is, it is it's a just, just a different way of looking at these, all these things that we have seen as being physical 
uh, all these resources are here, and it, it is it is probably a leap to see this, but even seeing the earth is being a part of you and you not being a part of it. So you 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 are seeing that all these things are resources for the spiritual man. So there is nothing that is not at your disposal. That's all I was saying. So as we grow in this and we look away from looking at the physical Abraham or the physical or, or this or that, when the scripture talks about the earth and the ground, it is talking about a spiritual thing that is, is there for man for the purpose of recognizing who he is and not the physicalness of, of this, this place where we live. That's what I was trying to say. I yes. hope that came through. Yeah, it, it came through the entire uh, time. Perfect. Now on to uh, your, uh, more importantly, your statement. Um, uh, yes, 100%. Uh, we, we get caught up on what we have been uh, taught uh, to do um, and part uh, also, you know, with the simulation as well, is we have been uh, taught to um, read the scriptures and look at all of these things and look at the world, uh, period, and interact with the world with uh, our two eyes um, uh, alone and to only see it from uh, the physical aspect of it, which is all of a sudden us more so uh, observing it and not experiencing it and being an active uh, part of it, number one. Uh, number uh, two, um, for an example, um, uh, Pastor Richard mentioned a little while ago, uh, talking about the scriptures about uh, doing all of these things in the, uh, the Bible uh, feeding the poor and, you know, all of these other things that uh, we were told to, to do or is common to Christianity. And then you will have, uh, get all of these great things uh, as a result of it. Now, uh, the way that we've been taught and the way that we've looked at that in the past is just, hey, go down this uh, checklist. I need to do all of these things. As soon as I do these things, bam, I need to go uh, basically cash in all of these good deeds I was told to do for my prize, my payment, uh, et cetera. Uh, what it is that we were actually uh, mentioning this and what is uh, not um, a great focus on is all those things that we were told to do. So going back to the physical and the spiritual, it's not that you were just, for example, I'm just gonna say the idea of feeding um, the poor. It's not that you're just going to find some people who you say, oh, these are poor people, they need some money. Let me give them some money because that's what I'm supposed to do. It is a process uh, that is taking place uh, spiritually um, from within in terms of uh, an individuals um, or I, I just say our hearts. Uh, and this applies to everyone. So I'm not talking about one particular uh, person. I'm just talking about in general, I guess in a, a sense, the, the science of all this or the, the true nature of all this, the spirituality of it. It is softening of the heart and uh, what is actually uh, taking place is that individual, that person, we are being transformed and come in uh, more aware of the spirituality of our uh, selves. And so it is us who are changing, but that's what the focus is uh, being done on. And it's not for this cash in uh, reward, so to speak, because now we are uh, missing the fundamentals, spiritual part of what it is that we're supposed to be focusing on. All that other stuff that was uh, named comes about when all of these things that just looked at as uh, deeds actually are done in the correct uh, manner. The, um, where what is often missed and messed up is doing things as a means to an end, i.e. for the end uh, result. So I was having a discussion um, a few weeks ago and uh, to explain this, how uh, our society works, for example, uh, with marriage. Um, often uh, it is told that we should be uh, married and have kids and then, you know, we're living uh, life the correct way, et cetera. Um, it just, this is only uh, one example. There are many different types of examples that we see in our life every day. However, what typically happens is the person or people or our society in general focus on the latter part, just the end, and then all of the ingredients of the important things that need to come uh, first 
or there's no effort uh, put in it, and but it's not until it's too late that that is found out. So for example, if that is supposedly the goal, which it really shouldn't be the goal, there needs to be more so of an emphasis or the, the main focus needs to be, okay, finding a situation uh, where I am connected with a, a person and there's love and I all of these other things. And then maybe marriage and uh, kids would then come as a result of that. But you're not just looking to go to the, um, uh, the, the latter part. So it's kind of like a focus. The focus is on the small part in the very uh, beginning. The same idea that I mentioned before with the karate kid, wax on, wax off. The same thing with uh, basketball, uh, learning first how to uh, dribble properly, how to shoot free throws, the mechanics of shooting, and things like that. It is a uh, practice and a study of the, in a sense, uh, the beginning, or uh, in the sense of the soil, uh, that for which who we are, and all of those other things will then come built upon that. I'm finished, I said a lot. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? I think that the thing that closes the door on understanding is looking at the names in the scriptures just as we look at our names. That they're just what we call you by, or that's what you respond to when someone says that word. Eastern thinking speaks the idea of a name being the formation of your function. And that is the reason we have missed so much in the scriptures, and particularly the Old Testament, because we have taken the names as we have been taught to take them. And that is Moses' name is Moses, he's the, the man Moses, as opposed to the functionality of that name. Without, um, without understanding what that name fits, and to the scheme of, there is no uh, spiritual understanding at all. And when Ron, when Ron and Sheldon are speaking about uh, the idea of, um, of uh, the, the, the physicality of things is not uh, what we uh, are supposed to be focused on, uh, where that speaks directly to, see, you get first the kingdom of God and his rights and all these other things will be added. If you... If we are, once we begin to see who we are, and we desire deeply to understand this, the uh, the principles which are the things of the kingdom, and 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 we focus on the righteousness that we are, is it, then we don't have to consider the other things that would be added. Now, one of the things I do believe uh, that that we must hold on to if if we are to continue this journey, it, it is the, the things that will be added. We can't focus on what we want to be added. We focus on what needs to be added. I'm sorry, we, we, we recognize what needs to be added, but we don't know how it's going to be added. We It doesn't tell us what is going to look like when these things are added. So when these things are added, we call it miracles. But they're not so much of a miracle as they are of, a, uh, of the fulfillment of a promise. When we focus on who we are, focus on the principles that makes us human, then the addition of those things uh, become the fulfillment of a promise. The struggles that we go through, the struggles we have are not for our destruction. They are for us to embrace what we know the truth to be and the fulfillment of the promise takes place. We are in this earth to understand something is nothing else. Physical things do not make us who we are. 
The amount of money that one has or doesn't have does not add to them, nor does it detract from them. The, the greatest wealth that we could ever have is in those words, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's the greatest wealth. With a single focus on that, we then are candidates for the fulfillment of the promise. And that prom- the fulfillment of it does not come when we want it to necessarily, but it always comes. That fulfillment does not look like what we think it should, but it does let us know it's there. And there are things that impede that. Our struggle with who we are, uh, our vacillation with what we are about the journey, I'm on today, tomorrow I'm not, that kind of thing. It is imperative that regardless of whose feelings we have to hurt, regardless of who doesn't like us, regardless of what people say about us, regardless of what they may seek to do to us, our primary focus has to be the journey that we are on. I am a living witness that that primary focus will bring you to a place where you don't even consider what the additions are going to be or how they're going to be. You simply focus on the journey. Is it easy? No, it's not. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Reminding ourselves continuously what the primary focus is. Reminding ourselves continuously of the greatest wealth that any human can have is knowing who it is. Reminding ourselves that yes, these elements are in the earth for the purpose of the survival of the human body and to create a living space as the human desires to live. And that what is taking place in our society is that Everything that for survival has been translated into money. If we could only hold on to this, that money is no different than the soil that we need to grow food. Money is a tool. And because we are focused on the journey, because our focus is is who we are, then those elements will be added and they will come without destruction, without the destruction of us. However, there are indeed prerequisites and I've mentioned them before and I reiterate, the prerequisites are to keep the Sabbath holy, meaning that set aside that period of focus on and remembrance of who you are and where you came from, what your purpose is. Focusing on that on a daily basis. And in doing that, you will automatically feed the poor. Because as Sheldon said, feeding the poor is not giving them money or food. Most of the time, feeding the poor is feeding people like Jeff Bezos. He is poor and doesn't know it. Feeding the poor is is, is like feeding people like Mitch McConnell who is seeking power at any cost. Feeding the poor. And when we when we do that and recognize that, we will have a flood of, of our needs taken care of without having to lift a finger because our promise is that our Father, the universe, will provide, will make those provisions, will open the doors that are necessary for us to receive the abundance. Why? Because birds do not do not plant, neither do they harvest, but they are fed. And if the creator, if the universe 
if the father feed the birds, why would the father not make sure that we are taken care of? How is it that a hurricane can come, a tornado, and a bird's nest was in the tree? The tree can be blown over, but the nest is still in it. Why? How does that happen? How is it that all of these uh, things, uh, these uh, calamities can take place, and the, the one who is most affected by them is man because man has not put its trust in who it is man has put its trust in what it has thank you questions or comments so so what i've heard is from what everybody's been saying is um seek first the kingdom of god but the issue is i am the kingdom of God. So I have to seek um, the awareness of who I am. Um, and that and, and in seeking that awareness of who I am, then I I can resurrect, I can recover the truth of my love, my righteousness, my um, um, my um, kindness, all of the things that are are, are, are good seed, uh, my, my, my balance, my harmony with nature, all of these things that, that, I, that I can recover the, the truth and the awareness about uh, me as the kingdom of God. And then when I speak these things and when I put them out there into the macro, they become seeds and fodder for those like Mitch McConnell, those who don't know themselves. It becomes seeds that if they will just grasp these seeds and plant them within themselves, meaning meditate on them, let them uh, 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 help align them and focus them and balance them, uh, then uh, uh, that's that's where uh, the growth comes. That's where... uh, the, the planet begins to rectify itself. That's where mankind begins to grasp uh, a hold of the fact that it is not me and the color of me or where I came for from or who my father is. It is all about who I am, who you are, and who we are as one. That's what I've heard. Well, you heard it all. I like that. Um, as everybody was speaking, I, I was thinking about something. You, you, you hear me talk a lot about my childhood when I was a child and, and things I remember. Uh, one of the things I remember was it seems like every time something happened, uh, some big event, had an aunt that would always call and she'd say, is everything okay? Everybody all right? And if it was a death, she almost know it. And she didn't know who it was or she asked, is, is, is so-and-so okay? What's going on? You know, and and I, I, I remember have, listening to my dad on the phone with her and thinking, wow, how does she always know? How does she know when to call, you know, when, when, when to pick up the phone? Because a, a lot of times you just didn't hear from her until something, it, at least that's, that's from my perspective, that, that seemed to be true. And that reminded me of the Native Americans. I remember a, a, a friend of mine when I lived in Minnesota talking about naming the children and what was going on in your life at that time or 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 where you were physically in the earth and, and just some so in other words, these are two examples of letting the universe talk to you and, and, and having that capacity to listen. And and that's what Barb just described. That's what Pastor described. And 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 I I even listened to uh, uh what 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 uh, uh what Pastor was saying, we're just talking about uh, the fundamentals of, of recognizing that you're the human, 
and and, and putting that together, what Sheldon said, where he, where he talked about the, 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 those fundamentals of of you know the the the, the basketball player or, or the wax on and the wax off, there are things that we do to put this in motion, and those exercises are to show you, not the earth, not the creator, that this is direction that I choose to go in. This is my journey. And these are my desires. And 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 uh, the results are who we are. And 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 and, that, and it reminded me of the importance of of memory that that S was talking about. And 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 as as we have stated, that memory expands more further than you think. It it, it expands. It, it's it's not just uh, based on those experiences, but those experiences that you have long forgotten about or, 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 or that seemed insignificant that may have tied to, to something else. So uh, I, I just listened to what everybody said, and, and, and you, you, you really were uh, explaining the, the community that we are, and, and a lot of it because of the things, as Pastor said, we've attached ourselves to, we've become insensitive to what the universe tries to speak to us. Thank you. Anyone else? One, one final thing I want to, uh, observation, I'm just really just listening and and making notes here and um even what Sheldon talked about. This the uh we talked a couple of weeks about about the healing and what I realized that like, being the healing, forgiveness, the focus, the awareness. The one thing I want to emphasize is all these things that we uh, you know a being I am all these things are continuous. It's not like something we discover, we understand it, and that's it. And as everybody was talking, you, you just really, the, the journey, the healing, forgiveness, being I am, understanding the ascents, everything everyone was mentioning today. And I don't know if it was just something that simple, but sat there and listened like all these things are continuous it's not something that you discover and it ends and and really just listening and just reminds me and, and it's helping me focus on all these things are continuous there's no there's no end of them and so uh, sometimes we read and we look at things as past tense or as something that stopped but all these things that uh, in order for us to understand and continuously we talk about moving forward all these things we have to view as continuous and so that was just the observation that i made based on what everyone was saying barbara um sheld and, and and what you were saying ref well uh, and it's just everything is continuous it's not a discovery and then stops and so that's why we expand and grow is because all these things um even when we look at healing, healing is constant. It's a continuous thing that we have. Absolutely. Anyone else? I have a question that it might take us uh, on a different course. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking of what Pastor said about the Black Earth and, and uh, part of the conversation he and George had. I'm trying to remember the words, but uh, looking at the the African and what I what I suppose his journey was supposed to be spiritually and, and, and getting it off course. Uh, there are two people in the scriptures that the, the the scriptures define as being ruddy. That is David and Adam. 
uh, ruddy meaning to be red, taken from the red part of the earth. What significance is that as to to what we're discussing? Is, is there anything that you see there, or or or? Wasn't it also Esau? Just... Um, Esau. Esau. Um, or... okay. okay, I didn't. Th okay. But I, I just don't think those are coincidences, uh, and that that it lists that uh, that that it, it makes a point of letting you know that. So, just something to ponder on, I guess. I think that. Yeah, of all would be answer to that more than what we think it is. Okay. So um probably when well not probably one of you guys can um do that research and bring it back to us. I don't hear any more saying okay. Oh, I'm looking to everyone laughing. <laughs> you know what the funny thing about? I don't hear anybody saying okay, but I guarantee you, over half of you gonna be looking for it. Um. I'm I'm done. Yes. Yeah. Any any other questions or comments? Um, I mean, it's always it's a lot to digest every week, but I think it it all kind of made sense and locked in and flowed. I, I guess yeah. I have one. I have one uh, comment, uh, just in case is a, a a a loose end for anyone who was listening when um, uh, Pastor Richard mentioned. Um, uh, the poor, and he mentioned uh, Jeff Bezos and uh, Mitch uh, McConnell. And just in case there's uh, anyone who who don't uh, understand and see how he could say that or what he meant by that statement, um, as all that we've been talking about, we've been talking about who and what you are. We're talking about spirituality. We talked about the connection to the uh, Black Earth, uh, et cetera. Um, that who is poor in the sense that he mentioned is that who does not understand, or I don't want to say understand, that who is not at all aware and therefore humanly uh, connected uh, to their uh, spirituality or the greater parts of them, uh, themselves. And also with that being said, as he mentioned uh, yesterday, when he was talking about none of us uh, actually grew up uh, poor, uh, the greatest uh, wealth uh, that anyone can have on this uh, earth is that uh, understanding uh, that connection and that oneness and who and, and what we are. Uh, that is something that no uh, amount of uh, physical anything will uh, uh, bring about uh, that. And as we were talking, I was thinking about it, if anyone can think about the, the greatest uh, joyous moment or experience that one has ever or can recall having uh, in this uh, lifetime, it is uh, most likely that uh, extremely uh, joyous uh, occasion uh, was not brought about uh, from uh, something that was extremely uh, expensive and most likely came about from something that was, uh, you know, quite uh, simple. And so that is what we're uh, talking about. Now, with that uh, being said, who would uh, then say, which it is the opinion of anyone, uh, you know, this, this is a rhetorical uh, question, not to get an answer, but does anyone uh, think that that particular moment, that particular thing, thing that you, uh, you uh, experienced, do you think that there's uh, uh, something else that is greater than that in terms of wealth? That's it. 
I'm, I'm finished. I just wanted to uh, to make that point about uh, poor and rich. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Yes. Any, I was going to say, any, anybody else? Um, any other thoughts or comments? Or we're going to put a pen in it for the day and and um, be back tomorrow. Anyone else before we uh, close out? If not, everyone have a, uh, a good Mother's Day, and we'll pick up tomorrow and. And maybe we'll even talk about this continuous a little more and, and how this is um, it's going to help us transition and shift. But uh, I know the thoughts and comments. We'll close it out today and we'll be back tomorrow for those uh, joining tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day.